Today we're going to talk about the big picture structure and the high and the low of the day. Stay tuned traders, you don't want to miss this one, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's the weekend here in Perth, beautiful sunny day, been down to the beach, it's been a good weekend. Last week we had some very big moves, we had a couple of consolidated days. But today we're going to talk about the big picture structure. That's the first thing we talk about in our simple 50 pips a day trading system. I know the longer that people have been following me, they're seeing things, they're seeing the same consistent trade setups coming off the numbers at the same time. Almost every single day, there's at least one or two really good 50 pip setups or better in at least one of the three sessions in at least one of the six pairs. So today we're gonna to review our simple system. We talk about structure, big picture. We're gonna go a bit more in depth into that today. More importantly, the high and the low of the day. And that's where our structure is gonna come in because this is gonna, I think, tie some things together for people. But also, we talk about the importance of timings. And I've said this time and time again, timing is everything. The market equity opening times are when the markets will move. Obviously, there are other trades at other times, but the longer that you watch and follow this, you'll see that those time frames are either used for stop hunts or for continuation moves, trapping traders up high for the shift in the New York session or down low for the shift in the New York session. If you're already in a trade, that could be a, that could be a continuation of that move or an extension of the range, or it may be a stop hunt in an existing trade that you're in for a reversal back to the original direction that you were trading in for the reversal again in New York or the continuation. It's all about trapping traders inside and then hitting the stops and shifting the market when, when they've got enough volume trapped up up high or down low over the course of two or three days, which is what we're gonna talk about today, two or three sessions, how they can trap volume higher up and then shift the market or trap it lower down and shift the market. The same thing happens in every session and it happens over the course of a day. But again, our 12 candle window, one hour prior to the equity opening times, the hour of the equity opening times, and the hour after the equity opening times give us a high probability for a, for a great trade setup for an asymmetrical risk reward target. So today, talking a bit more about big picture structure. Do you have a thesis for the pair you are trading? I think one of the biggest things people need to be aware of is that we're not just coming to the screen every day and saying, where's the high of Asia? Where's the low of Asia? We're going to wait for the stop hunt and trade the move. That's part of the, the system. But if you have the big picture structure and the real high and the real low identified, then you can step back and wait for the market to reveal its hand over the course of maybe one or two movements through the Europe stop hunt or the London open or perhaps even the New York open for the, for the 50, 75 or 100 pip move where they're not going to come back to, to, to stop you out. So again, the most important thing to remember at all times is that markets only do one of three things. They break out they pull back, they continue, and then they trend. They break out, they pull back, they reverse, we call that a false break. And they break out, they pull back, and they go into a consolidated trading range. So each day when I come to the market, the question I ask myself is where is the high and where is the low? So we should be able to identify whether, that, whether that's going into the Asian Open or whether that's after the Asian range has painted and we're going into the Europe Open, we should be able to draw two lines. And the way that I identify the peak structures are, we could have a move down. We could have a big move down and that could be the first push and the second push and the third push for a reversal. And then into the new session, they might come down again in Asia before the Asian market opens and reverse. So we, we come into the new session, we've got our low, and we've got, we could have our swing high right here. There's our high of the day, there's our low of the day. Now in, 
in uh, Asia heading into the year of open, they may come down and move up and then hit the stops from the Asian open and pull back. And traders will say, well, there's the high of the day. Okay, and they're right. We got a new high and we got a new low. But what often happens is that they'll, they'll short this and the market will consolidate and hit it again. And they'll say, well, that didn't work. I, I, sold, I sold up high after the stop hunt and I, I didn't get my 50 pips. Except that what's happened is we've had a breakout pullback and then a continuation. They pull it back. So now we've got a, the high of the day has been hit. They've taken out the stops. I'll just remove that line. They've taken out the high of the day, but they've also come back inside the range. Then they go up one more time. One, oh, we'll use the black one, two. And they might either take out the high or they might just jam into the high, but it's right around that eight o'clock, 9 a.m. time in New York. And they might, they might go one, two, three. And traders are like, oh, I got stopped out long or short. It, it, you know, the 50 pips didn't happen. The system doesn't work. I went long and they stopped me out again down here. And then they go, they say this is going, this is going to break out for a measured move, and they, they go long. The next thing you know, the market shifts, comes back one, two, one more at the US Open, and then drops down and moves 50 to 75 pips. Each and every day, we should be able to look at the market and say, where is the high? Where is the low? Now we're going to look at some specific examples of this week, but also Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, when the new week starts, we could have a, a range in place from Thursday and Friday, and Monday opens up in here, and they come down, Friday's low is there, they come up, and they take out Friday's high. They come back down in the session, and they can close there. Our, our high of the week now is right here our high of the week. So I want you to constantly be thinking about a box, a square box. Price has broken out of the most recent box and now we've got a low of the week right here. That's our low of the week. The higher low, the swing low, has, has given us a swing low which is supporting now buyers and we've got a high where sellers came in, a peak formation, and we've got a selling formation or a peak formation in place for sellers. Now we have a high and a low. What's important about this high and the low on a Monday, and if it's inside of Thursday, Friday, then our box still is wherever the most recent swing low is and the peak formation high, that's our box. As the week unfolds, we will either see them expand the range higher or come back down and lower our low of the week. So our box has been broken, but they've come back inside of Monday's range. But at some point, we may find the market breaks out and then comes back and pushes into the low of Monday and we get a range expansion. And that's what's important about the big picture of structure. Because when you have your high and your low, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that structure, that geometry, again, we talk about we talked about descending triangles. So there was a couple of pairs last week. I think the pound yen was one. Where on the daily chart, okay, we had we had a descending triangle that eventually broke out, came back, and now it's doing a measured move of this descending triangle. We had rectangles on a couple of the pairs. Okay, so they had a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday trading range. Eventually they broke out. They came back inside, but then they broke out again. We take this structure, okay, and we project the same distance downwards for a measured move. Because over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if they break out of that box, whatever that box is, the high and the low, they're going to do a measured move of that distance. Okay, and if you know this going into the trading session, okay, if, you're, if your bias is short, 
and the market gives us uh, we start down here and Asia gives us a high London Europe London breaks out and they stop hunt low and they do one push two push and then into New York there's three pushes and your bias is that we're going down that that one two three of Asia London and New York gives you an idea that you can be positioning yourself up top for maybe a four to one at least profit to risk ratio that's what's important about structure okay and every session you want to be asking yourself you'll get patterns within patterns so even inside of these trends we could have a high and a low Okay, and our, our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday might be a breakout for a trend continuation, but we may get a smaller rectangle inside of that, like we did on Thursday where the market trades in that range and then comes up top, breakout pullback for the measured move down. You'll get smaller patterns within the pattern. So it's important to identify the true high and low of every session. Every time frame is the same. They're all fractal. That's why we talk about people want to confirm all these multi time frames. We talked about this with the 915. The 4 hour charts, the 1 hour charts, and the 15 minute charts will all coincide and roll over together at 9 p.m., 1 a.m., 5 a.m., and 9 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, and of course 1 p.m in the afternoon if you're trading the close of the US markets. Where was the last breakout? So if you have a, a Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and we're talking about our 15 minute charts, okay? If you've got a high on Thursday and a low on Monday, and they haven't violated that range, you're still within Thursday and Monday's high and low. So they're, you're in a box. I don't care how they trade it. If that's the high and that's the low, you're in a box. And eventually they might break out, pull back, and they might come back up here, come back 50% and break out up top for a measured move the other way. So they hit the stops on the, on the downside. They clean the board off. They get, they get all the money down here. Then they shift the market, pull it back, and it might be a one, two, three into the Europe Open for the move up start identifying the true high and low. We're going to look at some examples, but again, every single session, ask yourself, where is the high and the low of the box? Not only for each. So when we go into London, where's the real high? Where's the real low? And I don't mean yesterday's high and yesterday's low. I'm talking about the most recent high that hasn't been stopped out or cleaned out and the most recent low that hasn't been cleaned out. We want the big picture, but each session be marking those off. If you're chasing all the swings, long and short, what's happening is this. You've got a high, you've got a low, they, they paint a high in Asia, they paint a low, then they hit the stops up here, they bring it down they, and they swing it up and traders go long, they hit the stops again, they hit the stops, traders short it up here, they go back up here again, they hit the stops, and all they're doing is they're, they're working one side, they're jamming you either up high or they're going to jam you in down low and then later shift it or continue the move with the trend. And there's a big difference as we talked about between a trending market and a, and a reversal situation or when they're bringing you up in three pushes to the peak. We saw that in uh, the last video, three pushes. Be paying attention, does each session, over the course of the sessions, over, over the day, Asia, is London moving up 25 pips? In some cases, if it's a big ranging day, they may be 50 pip boxes. If London's moved up another 25, New York opens up up here, they stop on high, they move it up another 25, three thrusts, jam them in underneath for the big reversal, for 75 oops, to 100 pips and guess what that is our average daily range so start thinking about that you've got the number boxes on your charts look at each box and say 
how many pips has Asia moved? And when London comes on board, are they, have, have they broken out of the, of the Asian box? Okay, so it's the same thing. It's a box. Think about this as a box. You might be in the 25 pip, might be 50 and 25, okay? London comes on board, and all of a sudden they burst out. Do they come right back in? Or do they come back in and drop it down again and hit the low again and drop it 25 more? Or do they come back in, bring it up, and then jam you down again for the hit up high? And then they pop it up another 25, so you're 25 up here. Okay? Typically, normally, the average stop pump will be 25, and in a larger ranging pair, sometimes pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, it can be 50 pips. If it's a large ranging day, the stop pumps can be 50 pips. If you're jammed inside of the high and the low of the week, okay, and you're 50 pips from the low on a Wednesday, don't be surprised if they don't come back for one more tap to the bottom on a, on a fast move for a one, two, three, and maybe a two bar reversal for the move back up 50 pips and then a move back another 25 to 50 and then the next day reverse the market and go the other way. So we'll look at some specific examples from this week. Hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders. Stay focused, keep getting better, stick to the outsides. Again, think of everything like a box and they're either breaking out and pulling back, okay, to reverse or going to a trading range or false break and going to the other side or breaking out, pulling back, filling more orders, and continuing the move until it exhausts itself at some other level. Stay focused. How good can we get traders? There's 50 pips every single day and sometimes more. So focus on the big picture structure, high and low of the day, equity opening times, round numbers, zeros and fifties, and, and now obviously we're seeing 25 pip stop hunts as well, quarters on pound Swiss, Pound, uh, pound yen and the pound USD and the other pairs typically pound CAD probably similar but pound Aussie pound uh, New Zealand can go 50 pips but keep it simple wait for the market to hit the stops how they handle price action at that level will determine if it is a stop hunt or a breakout let them reveal their hand and pay attention how they handle trading at those levels will determine if it is a stop hunt or a breakout if it's a stop hunt and a reversal most likely there'll be a candle formation an engulfment a pin hammer there'll be some sort of price action or a one two three that indicates that there's an opportunity to enter the market, but we do not blindly enter into a breakout unless it is a stop hunt at an existing level. And most importantly, at the equity opening times. Stay disciplined, keep getting better, and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets. And this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.